Globalization has the effect of making it unclear what actually law is. There's uncertainty as to whether law can only emanate from public authority or also from private authority. There's uncertainty about whether law will only be what was called hard law or whether soft law is also an option. So there's a whole range of factors which enters the equation in these days. In addition, with boundaries disappearing a bit, we notice already that our former graduates tend to hop from one jurisdiction to the other. They practice criminal law for a while in state A and then move on to state B and do some intellectual property law or company law. So we have to prepare them for all those challenges. Uh, how can we respond to these challenges? One way to respond to that is to make sure that legal education is not focused anymore solely on memorizing what the local code book says, but focus a bit on the underlying principles, focus a bit on um, what you might call applied theory, which would look into, for instance, the question as to why does contract law typically have consideration? Why is mens rea an element in criminal law? A focus like that on principles might make it easier to jump from one jurisdiction to the other. And then there's other things. Uh, in particular, law becomes more intertwined with its social, economic, political and even ethical surroundings, which means that the one way to respond would be to focus greater on, uh, to have a greater focus on interdisciplinary research and interdisciplinary teaching, make sure that students understand the politics behind the law, that they have a grasp of the basic economics behind such things as competition law or intellectual property law, etc., etc. How have policymakers and law schools in Europe responded? I would say the response has been a bit mixed. One thing that has happened in Europe and which I think has been very useful is the stimulation of exchange students. It is now very common for a law student to spend a semester, maybe a full year, studying abroad, acquainting him or herself with different jurisdictions, different ways of legal thinking. What has been less helpful, perhaps, even though probably the inspiration behind it was okay, has been the attempt within uh, Europe to come up with a Bologna model, a standardization, a harmonization of the degrees that would uh, be awarded when people come out of law school. That hasn't really taken off as well as it could have, perhaps. Um, what is also very useful, no doubt, in Europe is that topics like public international law, private international law, European Union law, comparative law, all have become part of the compulsory curriculum. Um, obviously, in a globalizing world, attention for those disciplines that are most closely associated with globalization can only be useful. What is a bit more worrying though, in at least in a country such as Finland, I can't speak for other countries in Europe, but in Finland it's fairly evident that much of the uh, funding available for education, the public funding, has been channeled in recent years into research. There's a lot of money available for research, more so than 10-15 years ago. But it has typically come out of the financing, the funding of regular university departments, regular law school departments, which means that they tend to become understaffed, that the teaching tends to become understaffed, whereas the research, maybe not overstaffed, but very much stimulated. I think that's a worrying trend also, because one thing I forgot to say, but the one of the ways to respond to the challenges of globalization would be to focus on intense skills classes, writing skills, argumentation skills, research skills, which go beyond Wikipedia, that sort of thing. That demands intensive teaching and that becomes more and more difficult to organize because the teaching staff becomes thinner and thinner, becomes eroded a bit and channeled away into research. And I'm not sure whether that's a very helpful trend.